Welcome back to Banter Brigade. <clears throat> and today, me, Sid O, is joined by a very new guest who you probably haven't heard of before, named Libram. All right, Mr. Libram, you can you can speak. Uh, yeah, hi. It is I, Libram. And you're sure that there's no like relation between you and the individual named called Metal, like zero uh, resemblance. I mean, yeah, it's, I'm still the same person. It's just that I'm going under a different alias because I would like to start up an actual YouTube channel. Yeah, so we're I gonna have to one. cut that part out. Yeah. Libram and Metal are two different individuals. They have Serious. to be. They have to what? be, yes. They have to be. They have to be. Why? Yo, cuz another alien. Yo, cuz we can't have like two. We can't have like two of the same person around, man. That's going to cause a paradox. I can't have Metal and Libram on the on the, you know, character select. But they'll, but they'll recognize my voice. I mean, yeah. we have like we have like you know, echo characters in Smash or we have like other characters, you know, like Ryu and Evil Ryu. Yeah, or yeah. Like, or like, you know, Jin, Devil Jin or like Secret and Nightmare. Yeah, You're this isn't this is not a simple palette swap, I'm sorry. It's like two completely different two completely different entities, I'm sorry. I mean yeah, but they are two completely different entities. I mean Metal didn't do shit. The Roman has like an actual YouTube channel. Yo, see? See that's exactly what I mean. All right, but that discussion, that very funny discussion aside, today I want to talk about the essence of a peak video game. A peak video game? Yeah, like what makes... Oh, was that? Oh, sorry. I hope it was something that I'm able to, like, bounce off of because if you're talking about Shin Megami Tensei, I'm I'm cooked. Oh, yo, 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 we're not going to cook you yet. We're not going to cook you in the fires of Nocturne yet. We're going to get there in, like... A few minutes. But I'm going to start off by making my list. Or going over my list of the things, right, that I want a peak video game to have. Things I consider... Or, or, hmm, how should we do it? Should we, I guess we could do that. I was thinking maybe should we should just talk about why we like video games and then what we want in video games. Uh, I'll get to that, I'll get to that. Yeah, so I'll, like, go over my criteria, right? And then, like, list off a bunch of games I like, right? And see how they fit into that criteria. Okay, so. These are what I consider to be the building blocks of Peak. Right? Yo, if you got a game with cool character designs and a unique world, yo, that's pretty Peak. Okay? Oh, yeah. If you have, like, an original unique story that's very unique or hasn't been done before, also pretty Peak. That's pretty good. I'd like to... Counter that by saying I don't think the story has to be completely original. You yeah, yeah. I'm not saying. Basic. Yeah, I'm not saying every game needs to have this. It's just one of my criteria that I like seeing. Yeah, like it, it could be based. It could be a game based on like a past event or a book or you know it could be. Although technically, I consider. Thing is, I don't yeah. consider source material to be like non-original. Like I still consider so Like if you have a game that's adapted. From a book, I would still consider that to be original. Like, as long as the story in the book is unique, it doesn't matter if the game adapts it. I would still consider that and the game original. Okay, then. Unorthodox gameplay. Now, this can go both ways. This can be great or it can be awful. But I I usually like seeing experimentation. Experimentation. Oh, unorthodox. That's what you... Yeah, Yeah, I guess so. Okay, I like easy-to-understand mechanics that have depth. Right? A game can be complex, right? But if it does a good job of teaching me, right, of its complexities, it has done a good job. Because there are games that I like, right, that have, like, really hard to, you know, get through tutorials. Oh, yeah, um, 100. I think fighting games are a good example. Yeah. Then we have cool music, chill vibe. Chill vibe is, like, its own little niche. Yeah. Like, yeah, I chill like... Vibe is not... Can you... In... I mean, cool music, yeah, obviously, if, like, the music is very, like, immersive, but... When you say chill vibe, could you explain? Yeah, thing is, like, I like intense games, but I also like games that I just sit down and just, like, fucking do barely anything in, right? Like a fucking, uh, what do you call it? Um, well, let me think, what's the name? Like a town simulator, right? I love Animal Crossing, right? Now that is a chill game, 
Very chill game, very oh, yeah. relaxing. Um, in replay value, enjoyable gameplay to replay. That's basically replay value. Oh yeah, so they keep the long. It uh, gives longevity. There's mm-hmm. a lot of games nowadays. They either really are one and done. <sighs> yeah. Just like uh, older game generation, you know, there was a uh, replayability to it mm-hmm. because you know the the game wasn't stretched out so long. That is true. Sure. If the game is, is stretched out too long, it actually decreases its replay uh, replayability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I see. Um, versus a game like, you know, Devil May Cry, where the whole appeal is you do the cool combos and, like, attacks and stuff. It's just over the top, but it's also, like, a very, very short game that you could finish in a one sitting, but uh, the replayability is that, like, it's just very satisfying to play. It's kind of, like, the same reason why I like fighting games in Tekken. It's just the replay value of just, you know, uh, optimizing combos, you know, just getting better at the game. Okay, that's that's fair. Then I have hype. Now hype can like I, the definition can vary for that one as well. So I'll I'll skip I, that one for I now. Do, I'll I explain it later. Hype. Yeah, we're gonna explain hype later. Okay, I mean. <sighs> no, 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 I'll I'll explain my hype. Uh, you can explain your hype. What okay. gets you hype? Okay. Right now, I, I'm very mixed when it comes to hype. I I I tend to like it less nowadays. I oh, like that's. Hype. That's okay. We can like talk about that, like when we talk about a specific game, why it's hype or isn't hype. Very well. Okay. I enjoy morality systems, right? You know, although I guess that sort of ties into player expression, which is a few points down. It's like giving player the decisions, right? That can affect the story and gameplay. I enjoy that. Gameplay story yeah, no, synergy, that's basically the same thing. Gameplay story synergy. Okay. You want, you want to elaborate on that? thing is, because you can make a decision in the storyline, right? That can change the way the game works. It can right. unlock something. It can take away something, you know? Or it can give you something. Yeah. No, good level yeah, design? Yeah. We all yeah, love that. I mean, we all love good level design, you know? Instead of just, you know, hallway simulators. Hallway sims. And yeah, it's true. Arena, a circular arena. Circular Arena. Oh. It's so funny you mentioned Circular Arena because a lot of Armored Core's action happens in a Circular Arena. Circular Arena. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would say that's kind of lame. Yeah. I mean, it depends. Although, I guess you need a place to fight. It works for some games, but not every game. Although, that's... It works for... Yeah. That's where you can just go crazy in the environmental design. Like, you know, you can add elevation or you can add hidden pathways. Yeah, you know, a lot of like. like you know, did I say environmental hazards? Sorry. Yeah. You no, know, I said elevation. I said pathways. Envi- then I said, oh yeah, environmental hazards was the third one. Yeah, environmental hazards or just like you know, treat the level as a character as well, where it has uh, its own depth to it. You know. Its yeah, that's. Mechanics, its own gimmicks. You know that it, 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 it makes you feel more engaged as opposed of you know. The uh, area just being like a little uh, piece. Yeah, that is pretty good. Yeah, so when I say yeah. Armored Core and Circular Arena, so a lot of the old Armored Core games, right, they had this fighting game portion where you would like basically go through a tower of opponents, right, to yeah. reach rank one. And usually the arena that this fighting took place in was a circular arena, right? Although we didn't really think about it much because, you know, we were too drawn towards the mecha action. We didn't realize that we were fighting in a circle, even though that's exactly what we we're doing. The later Armored Core games, yeah, they had like, you know, the variation in the environment. Like, For Answer has variation, even if he did just fight in one desert all day. Yeah. Um, still here? Yeah, I'm still here. I was listening. Okay, so do you want to start or should I start? A listing off games. What I like, what I like in a video game. Oh yeah, that. Go ahead, go um, ahead. Yeah, pretty much all the points here I liked as well. Um, I guess what other thing I liked. Um, let's see. I guess a really uh, the environmental design, the art aspect of it, um, as opposed to the technical. I like, I mean like. Uh, no, that's not true. I, pref- I would prefer more technical, but, like, the art does also carry it, uh, always as well. Like, um, you know, certain art 
styles for certain games, like, it can really affect, you know, your immersion. You know? Mm-hmm. I like to feel, Im- I guess what I like in video games is I like to feel immersed. Yeah. That is I, fair. I, as opposed to it, I, I would not want a video game to make me think of reality. Mm-hmm. You know, because I want to place, I want to place myself in a different, like, universe, per mm-hmm. se. Mm-hmm. And that's really the interesting part of it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess another thing I like in video games is uh, good movement mechanics, just good controls. I just want it to feel good. So to that is so funny. Like, you know, because like, you know, you have those like games that are like super. I mean, you have like those are the older games. Yo, that is basically movies, Armored like, Core, really, bro. Really Armored Core, literal like, epitome modern, of jank. Or, or, like, Yeah. Frustrating. Where you're like going through sand and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I just want. Uh, I just want good movement mechanics. I wanna. I want a, like a sense of uh, freedom. You know, when, when playing the game outside of just the the mechanics or like the laws of like the actual game world. Mm-hmm. Um. I think that's it, really. Okay. So I'll list off my first game series. Old Armored Core. This is Armored Core. This is Armored Core pre. Let me see. Um, oh, well, you put some extra work into it. Yeah, I mean, thing is, yeah. thing is, old Armored Core. There's like three. There's like four different generations of Armored Core. Let me see what I classify as old Armored yeah, Core. There are a lot. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm sorry. I've only only ever played two of them and that was for answer and um uh was it fires of rubicon yeah okay okay so i'll include armor cores one to five in the old armor core category okay so a thing is armor core gives you a lot of movement a lot of freedom you can fly you can boost you know you can do a lot of maneuvers with your mecha in armored core with your player character but it is also very clunky to get used to. So technically, Armored Core is a paradox. It gives you a lot of freedom to move, but the controls are, well, they're not the easiest to pick up. Well, not at the start, but you can get used to it. And the later games do have, like, you know, better control schemes, like Armored Core 4 Answer, despite it still being very clunky. Um... Let's see. Um, hmm. Okay. So then, uh, yeah, I'll list off why I think Armored Core is a peak series. Or why old Armored Core is a peak series. So the gameplay in Armored Core, well, for the longest time, it was like the only, you know, mecha game of its kind. Right? It's about that mech fantasy. Customizing your own mecha, doing missions with it, and also fighting other mecha. Armored Core, old Armored Core had all of these things in it, right? And that's what made it great. That's what made it unorthodox or unique, right? For the longest time. And the music in Armored Core, it's sort of Armored Core has what I would like to like what I would like to say is cool music. But it's also like in that schizo core territory, you know, like you cannot understand the lyrics half the time. Right? Um, I wrote hype twice for Armored Core. I don't know why. It is hype squared. It's, I guess you really liked it. Thing is, Armored Core, like in the later games, like Armored Core has also had like that, it's always had that, what do you call it, mecha anime energy. So, right? Yeah. So, sorry, no, it didn't mean to When you said hype, is this the. You mean hype as in like your enjoyment of the game? Like I enjoy it, like, like it gives me like excitement. Yes, I was going to get into that. Right? Yeah, because that's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay, and, never mind. and then you have like later games like 4 Answer, which are just like insane. They just like step on the gas and go like a thousand kilometers in, in the air. Just boost. Right? right? It's, like, it's like a fucking Gundam anime brought to life. It's like, it's like fucking... It's like you get like end, end game, like end anime... 
what was it like you get final gundams right gundams that have gundams that have reached the maximum stage final stage of their evolution right and that's basically for answer for every mecha is like flying at like mark 10 right just fucking swinging swords and you know blasting lasers and shooting missiles it's great i can barely keep up with it but it's great right it's it's hype it's exciting it's adrenaline pumping even right and then armored core also has good gameplay and story synergy so i'll give an example of this i mentioned the arena earlier so armored core has this thing right it has like this fighting game mechanic called the arena where you the player fight opponents in like a ladder system right and what's interesting is you can fight some of the same opponents in the missions you play so if you kill the opponent in the mission they will disappear from the ladder in the arena right and in that way we have like gameplay and story working together although i don't know if this applies to the what do you call it later gen armored core games cuz i remember it being a thing in armored core 3 and i thought that was pretty cool and then we have like cool character designs and unique worlds right the premise of armored core is very interesting right for the longest time it was corporations mercenaries right and the way it executes like executes that idea is still like what do you call it it's like still one of a kind i would consider right the way armored core does it you have the you have the player being a mercenary carrying out hits basically carrying out jobs for companies right who are your clients right and in that way the way armored core tells its story it's not that you know straightforward it's not in your face i guess that's sort of that's sort of like classic from soft right you kind of get the story through mission briefings rather than dialogue you read right and sort of like put the pieces together one by one and i think that's very unique like that's very unique when you take it and like apply it to this like weird mecha world right that type of storytelling and the character designs in armored core well i don't think armored core has character as much but it does have a lot of mecha and their parts and like what do you call it their parts like you know inner like oh uh, what is it their parts their fucking you know inner stats right they're very in depth very thorough right it's great like you get a lot of cool looking mecha you get a lot of weird weird looking mecha and you can just like customize them to however you want and that's awesome and the player expression i don't know why i put this last but player expression is basically customizing your mecha which is like 60% of the game right and the fact that armor core gives you so much freedom to like make your mecha the way you want like that's just that's that's my mecha white dream right there like that's just perfect So that's my take on old armored core. Okay. On old armored. On on old yeah. armored core. That was a long segment for armored core alone. Yeah, the armored core okay. wank, man. It's it's getting out of hand. This guy needs to Damn. I need like, to shut I up. I don't I don't have much counter argument other than um what I've said in the past which is just like I think you know, I thought for answer was a very unique experience. It was mm-hmm. a lot different from like any other mech game I played. It was mm-hmm. insanely fast-paced as, as as autistic as the camera was oh yeah it still it still felt really fun it was very action it was very action it was definitely like it was a very unique experience definitely mm-hmm. like i liked it but then you know you have you know fights with rubicon and it just plays like another souls game and that was just very disappointing you know yeah i feel like as far as the rubicon streamlined a lot of like what do you call it the old armored yeah. core kinks and that's why i consider it to be like its own thing yeah i didn't mind the streamlining i just i i, I didn't like how it played so much like a souls game mm-hmm. or like how like just the gameplay that really that's sekiro that posture bro <laughs> yeah it's not very balanced i didn't like it i really didn't like it especially one of the boss fights it was a very annoying boss mhm it was a very annoying boss i mean but outside of the boss fights the game is fun outside of the boss fights. yeah when you come to the boss fight it plays like a souls game mm-hmm. it's just like man it just it just doesn't make me even want to play it just that's what kills it for me i mean I, it, it'd be it'd be really trash of me to mod the game so it didn't so it played differently but i mean nah, i shouldn't i really shouldn't i should just play for the game and beat it the right way 
I see. That's that's fair. Okay. I think you should explain the next game on the list. It's Old Monster Hunter. Uh, old Monster Hunter. Oh, man. Holy shit. Um, all depends on which Old Monster Hunter we're talking about. We're talking uh, like 1 to 4. From 1 to 4. Did we count, you know, Frontier in between? You know what? I think Frontier we should was, count Frontier. Frontier was in between. And we played the, we played Frontier the most. So you yeah. have a lot to say as well. As much as I will. Yeah. Um, I, I actually do like old Monster Hunter, you know, it's not as, you know, the, the meta is not as cancerous as it is today <laughs> where, you know, with World and, um, Rise, uh, the, the only good build is playing a crit build, you know, I mean, you had other builds as well, but for the, but the most dominating builds the, they used was, was, was crit. It just it just did so much damage, you know, and it it was it was tied to so many good stats uh, in world and Iceborne. Like holy shit, it was it was broken. Mm -hmm. It was one of the, it was one of the most broken stats in the game. Like it was just so strong. It overshadowed everything else. So it really Whoa. did funnel everyone's playstyle out into just running crit. I mean, running if you ran any other. Uh, build you could get away with you could still get away with it but it just wasn't nearly as effective uh, personally like it, it's just it, it was too strong it's too strong um, but old monster hunter it, it doesn't really have it does not really have that I see except for, except for what was it um, frontier frontier you get you get you get, you get, you get, you get Oh shit! Um, I, uh, what was it? Uh, Generation, Generation's Ultimate. You, you could actually uh, sort of. Nah, not really. And yeah, no, that's really no. I think that's just. I think that's all of Monster. Hunter. I think as a revisionist history, I think a lot of the older, even the older Monster Hunter games. Yeah, you ended up just going for like like a crit uh, build. Yeah, I don't know how they would fix the formula, unfortunately. Unless they just introduced other skills. I think they kind of did that with Rise Summer, but I didn't get far in Rise Summer because I just didn't like the game. Mm -hmm. I thought it was, I thought it was the, I thought it was, it, it's not a bad Monster Hunter game, but I think it was inferior to the ones that I did play prior. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, it was, it didn't feel good. It was too, it was too, it leaned too, too much in the action as someone who likes the action stuff. It felt, it felt, uh, not only was it like more streamlined, but like the wild skills and stuff and, and monsters have just too much health they have too much health oh yeah and, and the sponge problem yo it just got boring and it just made the grinding so much more like not fun mm. i don't know why i just i wasn't having fun maybe i was burned out at the time you could say i was burned out but i i, I definitely was not having i was definitely having more fun playing world iceborne than i was with the rise and suffering how interesting I guess it's unorthodox gameplay you have on the list, yeah. Yeah, for the also, time, just, pretty unique, yeah. yeah. For the time, it's pretty unique, you know. I mean, it still is. I mean, no game really plays like Monster Hunter in this day and age. I think the, the closest thing we got to it was uh, Wild Hearts, but unfortunately, like, that was ruled under EA, so Koei Tecmo couldn't do anything with it. Oh. And, and, and Wild Hearts has its own issues, you know. It, it, it's just... It's, Monster Hunter, you know, but it's still good. It, it, it could have been great, but it, it's, it's such a wasted potential, man. Mm -hmm. and so it's a shame. I still like that game. Um, music, yeah, Monster Hunter has insane. Monster Hunter, has, since it's been around for a while, it has a lot of music, and it's really, really good. And there's like different uh, remakes, uh, remixes of it. I'm glad they didn't go down the Tekken route where they started doing dubstep. You know, oh. <laughs> the, um, they haven't gone. Monster Hunter does not go down that route. I'm, I'm really glad. Mm -hmm. At least, I, not that I can think of in a main line. I can't really think off the top of my head. But Monster Hunter does really, really good music. That is true. You know? 
But Frontier had a lot of bangers and a lot of remixes. Yeah, yeah. Frontier had an insane amount. Like, holy crap. It had an insane amount. Um, the gameplay is really good. The story is not. The gameplay and story synergy, like, is no one plays Monster Hunter for the Yeah, I mean the I mean thing is the gameplay is synergized into the story because there barely it's is a story. A barely it's just story, gameplay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the story's dumb, but the the closest thing that interest I have the Monster Hunter story is just the lore. You, if I'm playing like a mainline Monster Hunter, like I'm barely going to care about the story. You occasionally get something cool like Fatalis. Yeah, yeah like Fatalis. No, but the thing is I feel like Fatalis was felt feel very organic it felt like it was something they did because the fans asked for it because it was during one of the monster hunter anniversaries and they showcased fatalis and like they're thinking oh shoot we might get fatalis and i and ice war and so they thought okay for a final update we'll add fatalis and i respect that i respect that the monster hunter devs they they're one of the few game devs that actually listen to their fans mm-hmm uh, unironically, like mm. even if I like, e- like even from from World to Iceborne, I listen to your fans. From even from Rise to Sunbreak, they still again they still listen to the fans. There was a lot of issues with Rise on release, and all of those got fixed with the expansion, making mm. it uh, elevating it. Um, it's it's, it's uh, like just the amount of the amount of fixes they did from Rise to Sunbreak is insane. Yo, that's like, yo, that's great. That's beautiful seen it in any other game really mm. where all the major issues were fixed and the game was just better in so many ways it was just it was just it was just better mm-hmm. like that that's like holy crap it, like the sunbreak salvages rise it really does oh well, that's um, good to hear hmm. yeah which is good to hear so i'm glad that this i hope the devs continue to you know take some f- criticism from the fans you know <laughs> look back on some of their shortcomings and just you know make fixes and stuff, mm-hmm. you know and just improve like i hope they continue to grow and i hope they don't you know become like these other um uh game devs where like they uh forget why the purpose of, of their game and what it, its appeal was mm-hmm. uh, for and the fans mm-hmm. so I, I really hope they continue to do that i appreciate that's something i want to do I want to be able to take feedback from my fans and just try to, you know, understand their wants, while also trying to, you know, work around, you know, just the game development as well. This game development isn't easy, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, cool ga- character designs and unique worlds. Absolutely, yes. The worlds for, for Monster Hunter are very, very unique. I don't know how to keep coming up with ideas. Like, the, the crazy thing about Monster Hunter is... How the hell do they keep coming up with good ideas? You know, they damn. So I don't want things. good. I want shit only. <laughs> like, holy yo, shit. no, not at all. No, not yo, at all, not they're at all. too good, man. Gotta bring them down a notch. The team is very good. They're very innovative with their game. They realize that they have a good thing going, and they only just expand on it, or they add like a special gimmick, and they're very good at this. Mm. Oh, that was actually hilarious. They're doing it between 14 different weapon types. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I think there was rumored to 14 weapons. That's sick. You know, if there's another weapon, it gives me another thing. It gives me another weapon to pick up and master, you know. Even when we were playing um, Frontier, you know, it had it had 14 weapons, but it didn't have, like, the charge blade or anything. They still had, like, the, the Gen 3. Uh, weapon types mm-hmm. um, but you know I was still able to I, I was able to learn how to use the magnet spike and the tonfa and like the, the weapons in the previous gen because they all play differently each generation the weapons play differently with um with the world sunbreak and even uh or sorry like world rise you know and even like wilds it seems like the game is playing like very very like similar like it's playing very same people still adding like new stuff as well mm-hmm. but just the, you can tell you can just tell the gameplay between you know the different monster hunter games like it's a huge it's like it's it's night and day but with uh with those with the three games i just listed, mm-hmm. you know the with the closer gen like gen 5 uh it 
it's very um it's very very similar you know so that's that's kind of where like the innovation part drives up but yeah i like, see going back to frontier yeah it's just like the weapon types the the new weapon types you know it's <laughs> fun to learn it you know, the ones that never got brought back, except like one yeah. or two. Yeah, that's crazy. And styles too. Another mission weapon types had your, had different styles as well. So depending on the style you chose, the other ones they vary differently. I forget which which style was uh, the last one. I forget the name, but it was the one that allowed you to sprint with your extreme weapon. extreme style. It was extreme style. Yeah, holy shit. extreme style was just um. Yeah, extreme, extreme style was just anime. It was anime. It was anime. It was spot. anime. It was pretty. It was strong. Mm. You had a certain game plan in mind, but extreme style. The ability to just sprint with your weapon out is is insanely good. I don't think we've ever been able to have that since. Yeah, bring it back, come on. Just break the game, come on, man. Yeah, like back. that was good. That was really good. The extreme style was really, really good. Especially on the Switch X. The Switch X extreme style, you technically ran faster. You had like the... I think that was like the... That was the fastest movement. That was the fastest ground movement option in the game, I think. Unless there was something else. Unless you want to count magnet spike, in which magnet spike you literally just like fly. Auto yeah. Your way to the other side of the, the stage. You just fly. Yeah, yeah that's basically you just it. Fly. You literally just fly. I mean, you, you yo, your fly. weapon is a booster. Just a uh, portable. Yeah. yeah. Remember. That was like the, okay, but yeah, it's taunt. It's taunt. Not taunt. It was magnet spike. A handheld magnet booster spike. right there. What the fuck? Ma magnet spike was like such a broken. Like, that's the most. Mm -hmm. you know, it, was, it was it was a broken one. No, oh, that's like if, it made so a, interesting. if it made a return, it would be a shell of its former self. Damn, like it, it just castrated. Dead. God damn, just this just, just nerf so nerf nerf through the fucking yeah. I, people like you would see videos of people making comparisons between the two and they would just show you how nuded it was or how nuts it mm. was back in the day cuz that weapon was I feel like that weapon is like so that weapon is paid away. Mm. It's insane. <laughs> but I love that weapon. You know, despite my uh this, despite me sounding like, you know, this thing's broken as shit, never been not hot. Like, yeah. I loved it. I loved it. It's it works in Monster Hunter. It's sing it's like more of like a single player PvE. It works in Monster Hunter's context, so it's really fun. Yeah, it's a good thing it's um, not for PvP or we would have some big issues. Kirin armor. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, we're talking about the armor. Yeah, Kirin armor is very important. I mean, no, I like Kirin armor. You know, <laughs> yeah, the monsters the are. Armor. Yeah. Yeah. The, oh yeah. No, we go ahead. It's... The monsters can get pretty crazy at times. Frontier yeah. took it to a new level of crazy that they never oh, went yeah. back to. Yeah. I mean, they sort of did with Sunbreak, <laughs> but you know, I I have my issues with Sunbreak. I never got that far playing Sunbreak anyway. But yeah. Um, Sun, Sunbreak, uh, Sunbreak was the closest thing we had to Frontier because we actually did get Frontier monsters in that mm -hmm. game. We did. I think World only got one Frontier monster, but it was Lavisia, so nobody cared about Lavisia. Lol. It was such a lame, it was such a lame pick from all of Frontier. Mm. But I bet they did because it was just easy. Yeah, it's probably yeah. it. It's probably just easy to, to put. In. Such a bore. That 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 was the most least fought monster in the game, man. To the point where they actually have to make an event quest to give you a reason to actually fight. Okay, now that's pretty hilarious. That is hilarious. But that's just to show you that not everything is, you know, sunshine and roses mm -hmm. and all that. Um, yeah, in terms of cool gear designs, armor is really, really unique. I think the ar armor is really good. That was my issue with um. Uh, Wild Hearts, it's just the armor variety, it's just not that great. Um, oh shoot, the screen turned black. Um, if we're talking kit, it just falls off pretty hard, I don't think it's that great. If we're talking about the actual characters, not the armor, the armor's fine, the characters, nah, not really, they're not, I don't think they're, um, 
I don't think the character designs in their gear are that great, you know. No, I see. Like, whatever. Yo, I don't want to explain. Uh, the older ones, though. The older oh, ones. The older, ones? Yeah, the older character designs? Yeah, they're pretty great. Yeah, they're pretty good. I don't want to explain. And then, and then you have, uh, yeah, but, yeah, main character designs, yeah, go down. We're talking monster designs. Monster designs are kind of like a, they're not, they're, they're like a 80-20. Not all of them are, you know, great. You know, a lot of, uh, at least for worlds and rise, a lot of them were from older gen as well. But if we're talking newer gen, um, monsters, they're kind of, eh. I guess a good example would be Xenochiva. Xenochiva has a really good design. You know, but uh, from the Xenojiva to Safi Jiva, it's just like it's just a generic dragon. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that's saying the thing about Fatalis, but you know, Fatalis is old gen mm -hmm. at the same time. So we're talking newer gen, no, nah, not really. Um, what else was considered new gen? That I guess Legiana. Legiana was alright. No, Legiana was good. Legiana had a good design actually. The Sa uh, Xenojiva to Safi Jiva, uh, very uh. uh very uh eh. mm -hmm. it's just kind of like a downgrade because you know if you look at you know and savvy Jiva, they did you wouldn't think that was the same monster mm -hmm. you would not think that you know um what else i guess i guess shars valda shars valda is very good very unique design i see oh um, yo 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 Yo, you gotta you gotta mention the Dioras, man. The Diora family. Diora. Uh, but the thing is, there was only one Kashala Diora in all of the world. There was no variation of it. Frontier had like ten. Yeah, Frontier had a bunch of Kashala Diora. I still remember him. The Golden Bastard. <laughs> yeah, I think Rise had another Kashala Diora variant, but again, I just I can't really talk about Rise in summer because I I didn't really play it. I just wasn't as invested in that game. Oh yeah. But we'll, so we'll just we'll just focus on World Iceborne for the most part. Um, I guess what did we have? There was uh yeah I said no I said Leyana is shrieking Leyana. Zenogre and Stygian Zenogre are legacy. Uh, so I can't count those. Uh. Huh. What else was new that you should know about? Um, that was new. What was new that had a variant? Yeah, I guess Cold Taroth. But Cold Taroth uh, and Archever Cold Taroth were not very different per se, and more just so like textures and then like a couple extra moves mm -hmm. but it was still a really good raid monster i enjoyed that fight you know i, I enjoy i like the i actually did like the, the the whole mmo aspect of monster hunter where like you fight, do raids i actually did enjoy that i was having so much fun it makes me think I, it makes me think i probably would like final fantasy 14 if i had the time to play it i see i would actually like that but Um, what else? I'm not sure. Was that it for the monster hunter section? I, I, I guess so. We talked about it too long. We should keep it moving. I'm sorry for the dead silence. I was, I was okay. thinking. I was I was reminiscing. I don't want to explain Shin Megami Tensei. Oh god! I don't blame you. Yeah, we I went so long and I went artistically in depth in Monster Hunter. Damn, I, I let's probably see. bored. I probably bored most of the people that. No, no, that's are okay. not gonna watch this. Um, On... I have. Was I have my list of games here, but if you wanna, do you wanna explain Shin Megami Tensei? Shin Megami Tensei is like the last one on my list. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yo, so Megami I've... Tensei sucks. Okay, so there we go. Maybe we should, like, compress some of these down a little bit just to keep it, like, uh, moving along. Oh, okay. You know, not going such autistic, crazy rants. Yeah. Okay, um, the thing is, Shin Megami Tensei... Yeah, what was that? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Shin Megami Tensei 
is great. It is great. With uh, some mild issues. Okay, so... It has unorthodox gameplay. I mean, well, starting with Nocturne, the gameplay gets unique. Really unique. Although it was unique before Nocturne with the whole demon negotiation and recruiting, Nocturne introduced Press Turn. And Press Turn is great. Because it's like a puzzle being added to the battle system. Another layer, right? That rewards you for thinking about your strategy when you are in battle. Right, exploiting enemy weaknesses, getting an extra turn, or hitting a crit and also getting an extra, uh, an extra turn. And also customizing your party so enemies don't hit your weaknesses. Right, that's all great stuff. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei has great music. Absolutely, every time. It's, it's always a banger. It's Okay, Megami Tensei is hype. It's like you take a, what do you call it, a philosophy book and make it into an anime video game. Right, and what you get is Megami Tensei. And it's great because in Megami Tensei, you kill God, you recruit gods, you kill demons, you kill Satan, you parry nukes. Well, you don't parry nukes, but you do get to parry see nukes crash That's and uh, explore like apocalyptic worlds. Apocalyptic right, yeah, and like, what was that? No, I was thinking, yeah, I remember it yeah, something like that. Okay, yeah, apocalyptic worlds and, like, very unique worlds that you don't see in any other RPG. It's all great stuff. Now, the gameplay and story synergy... Okay, now, this is where the demon aspect comes into play, right? So, a lot of the demons you recruit over the course of, you know, while you play the story, right, into your party, right? They will have some form of involvement in the story. Like, there will be demon interactions, right? Where you'll have like one demon in your party talk to another demon of the same race, right? During battle. That's sort of like a nice mix of gameplay and story. And once you recruit demons, you have like a compendium of demons, right? And in the compendium, you can read about the demons, like, you know, their mythologies, their origins. It's, it's great stuff. So the more, rec the more demons you recruit, the more you get to learn. The more knowledge you acquire. It's great. Original unique stories? Absolutely. I don't think there's many other... I mean, every every JRPG has you killing God, so maybe it's not that unique. But back in the day, yeah, I feel like the way Shin Megami Tensei like, mixes, you know, that religious, that philosophical, that, you know, sort of modern contemporary, you know, aspects together with the way it tells its stories. It's still very unique. And... The next last part is very important, or it should be important in a Shin Megami Tensei game, and that is the morality systems and alignments. Now they, it, they are, is, was, like one of the biggest aspects of a Shin Megami Tensei game, because it's what decides how the story is going to play out and what route your game is going to take, right? Law, neutral chaos sometimes reasons, right? They're great. They really make you think about your own worldviews, right? And how you and how they would like change. What I'm trying to say is your worldviews, like in real life, will probably like have some influence on the decisions you make in the game, right? That interesting system of morality, right? That sort of like does a litmus test for your beliefs, which is very interesting for a video game to do. I don't think there's many other games that do it. And Shin Megami Tensei sometimes, you know, doesn't go all the way with it as it should. Right? But I feel like it still does enough. Right? In its own niche. And yeah, that's why I think SMT is peak. Right? Like out of all the games I have mentioned here, like Shin Megami Tensei is like the closest. I mean, Monster Hunter and Armored Core are great. I feel like Shin Megami Tensei ha has been like the closest I would... Fuck. The closest I would put, right? Like a game to being an art piece, right? Because I consider Shin Megami Tensei games to be art pieces, right? Or like the great ones like Nocturne. Definitely an art piece. Very inspired game in terms of art direction, setting, 
storytelling and gameplay and music and uh yeah that was my hopefully that one wasn't too long that was my piece on Shin Megami Tensei all right sorry about that just background noise i had to mute myself i was listening though yeah the morality system is really interesting yeah, I just wish Shin Megami Tensei was more accessible, right? Like, the battle system more is great, but sometimes it can give a newcomer a stroke. Stroke, yeah. yeah. I remember uh, I was watching a review on Shin Megami Tensei Five, and I think the, the YouTuber was explaining that there was, like, a, a difficulty spike mm -hmm. in, like, one of the areas. Although, I feel like that's... I feel like the Shin Megami Tensei Five is unique because it has the same problem as Rise with the bosses being spongy and requiring grinding or level mm -hmm. grinding. Yeah. Yeah. The typical RPG sin. Mm. Although it's weird because regular Shin Megami Tensei games don't do that. Like, they don't require you to grind. You can just play whatever and usually make it. So 5 is yeah. kind of weird in that way. Mm. Yeah. Alright, now explain to me Mugen. Yo, we're, yo, never mind, we're skipping Mugen. Mugen. Mugen is just crack. It's just the ultimate player expression. What is a Mugen? You make yeah, the fighting game simulator where you make your own fighting game, you know... You like Mugen. inject your own characters into it. You mod it the hell. Yeah. Oh, Mugen yeah, it's just game engine. Yeah, it's just oh. player expression to the max. It's great. Oh wow, that's weird. Wow. Okay. Yo, you gotta explain Gravity Rush, the very lesbian. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. The very lesbian. Um. Uh, the very lesbian. Uh, what do you call oh. it? The general community trying to insert it. Okay, the, the community doesn't even exist, man. There are no Gravity Rush fans. Damn. I'm kidding, there are. There are. There's Yo, like it's a the very... Yo, it's the very lesbian racing game. There we go. That's what I meant to say. No, it's not. Dude, stop. What? It has nothing to do with lesbians. What? It's not even... It's not even implied that it's lesbians. Okay, okay. It's because there's just... It's just that the, there's no, like, dominating male characters. There's only yeah, see? So we had to fill in the so... gaps. So you had to fill in the gap. I hate you. <laughs> I Yo. hate you so much for that. I've never fought that way about Cat or Raven at all. Yeah, never. but Gravity Rush is fun, bro. It has, like, very fun art style, very fun world, very comfy it colors. Is. Yeah. It is. a Yeah, that's what I was... Yeah, when I was talking about, like, a very, like, good, like, environment, like, that's the first thing that pops into my head. It's just mm. uh, Gravity Rush, and it's, like, uh... It's ours uh, sp uh, specifically Gravity Rush Two. Gravity Gravity Rush, the first Gravity Rush, had very um, muted colors. Gravity Rush Two is just like, it's so much like more brighter in comparison. Mm -hmm. It's so much more brighter, despite the, the despite how dark the story is. It's so, so much brighter, um, in terms of the visuals and like just the the improvements they made compared to the uh, the first. The first game yeah and like the story is nonsensical you're not supposed to take it too too seriously obviously it's not like a, it's just it's like there are some serious moments but you don't take it too seriously it's just meant to be like you know over the top it's very very like anime like there's like the crazy cinematics where like it looks like you're watching a power ranger uh Yo. episode and i and every time i when i first saw that i was so weirded out by it but it eventually just grew on to me. I I thought it was really good. I, my only issues with Gravity Rush Two is the the ending is not. Oh, it's ambiguous. The ending is ambiguous, but the build up to it is is pretty poorly handled because you're no longer even uh, playing the game. You're just you're kind of just doing nothing. God damn. He, 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 he turns into a walking sim more like a really really whack platformer it's like i feel like the developers I, it definitely feels rushed i think the i think the end part of it was rushed because of just how sloppily it was handled mm -hmm. you know it didn't make sense you know at least the second ending there's there's like the main ending and then like there's the an ending after and then the dlc i have not played the dlc yet Hmm. But I should get around to. Um. But 
other than that, uh, is I would I would recommend Gravity Rush. You know, it's got one of the best music scores I think in any video game. It's got one of the one of the best music scores. Personally, like it is. It's that say it's like it's like one of those soundtracks where it's like it's really good. Like it just like it has its own identity that like if you were to hear any of the songs, you would know. Okay, it's from Gravity Rush. Yeah, yeah, that is a hard agree. Yeah. Like, Gravity Rush has, like, despite being just, you know, more like, orchestral, um, it has its identity. And I'm, uh, I just I just think it's really good. You know? But apart from a, a couple issues, it plays like a, it plays like a, a, a middleware game. Yeah, I think it's middleware. It, it plays mm-hmm. like that, even though it's made by Studio Japan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if Studio Japan counts as middleware. I'm not sure, but it does feel like that. But like, it's still like really, really good. Yeah. Um, what else is on this list? Damn. Okay, I guess I should just speed it up a little bit. Yo, okay, Soul, Soul Sacrifice. Sac- Yo, just, just, Soul Sacrifice. Yeah, just the best one. The best the Vita game ever. Yeah. One of the best Vita games. Unzip right now. Yeah. And start. Like holy crap! I, Yo. I love the setting. I like the setting. I love the. Yeah, I just like the sitting. Love the music. Has another very unique music score that I could easily identify. Like I would know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the story is really, really good. The story, the sub stories are also are 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 really are even better. The lore is insanely. Just the lore is insanely good. I didn't read all of it. I read some of it, but like it's really, really. Yeah, the good. story in Soul Sacrifice. Yeah, kind of peak, kind of peak. Yeah, like holy crap! It is like man. It make it makes me so annoyed that Studio Japan is dead. That's how you know. Like, I have like two <laughs> games on this list that was made by Studio Japan. Like, oh man, tragic, tragic. Studio Japan died for this current the cultural zeitgeist oh my god yeah that's true it's truly a shame it's truly a shame yo <laughs> tuikoden yo tuikoden uh, is basically uh samurai monster hunter there we go we're done samurai monster hunter it's very very basic very rare bones but you know it has another unique st- I, I man i'm really yo like, the art I'm style in that one also kind of crazy yeah what the fuck yeah i, Pe- I like the art shit. style i don't like i don't like the armor i think the armor in uh tuikoden uh uh, is not that great. I don't think it visually it's very visually appealing. Mm-hmm. You know, or not appealing. It's more just too grounded. It should really embrace that more fantasy aspect of mm-hmm. it just a little more. I feel like it needed more time in the oven to cook. You know, and Suikoden two is basically Suikoden one, but just you know, it's a little more refined. There's like a couple of new mechanics, you know. It's the second game in the series, you know. I don't think it's Koi. Is it Koi Tecmo? Yeah, I don't think it's Koi Tecmo's, like, really, really like big uh, titles. I think it's more like their side one. But you know, if the, if a third uh, so we couldn't would have come out, I think I would buy it absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, if I you know had when I get a job again, or if I have like some source of income. You're gonna have to mm-hmm. jump in the water YouTube. and look for it. Yeah. It works. Yeah. But yeah, suikoden has got like good music as well. I really like its um, it's it, it's feudal Japan um theme. I really like that. Story is nonsensical, G- generic anime. It's whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't have to take it too seriously. But I like the. Oni designs. I like some of the. I like the music. I know I said the music already. Oni designs are cool. I feel like weapon designs are all right. They're all right. Mm-hmm. Armor designs not so great. I like its um. It's it's got a weird. Is it is it are they called meet mitas mitas? I think. Yeah. It has like a weird. It has like a spirit system where you can you can equip yourself with certain spirits and they give you like abilities and stats and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it's very. I think it has some. I think it has some depth to it. You know, but because the game is so niche and not very popular, I don't think it's been explored. You know, mm-hmm. I think there is. I think there is. Uh, there's more to it, so it's like a shame. It's kind of like with uh, Tech and Tag too. You know, uh, there was just so many different combinations. There were so many characters that like there was like infinite possibility. You know, mm-hmm. potentially. So I I feel that same way with Suikoden, like where 
there's still untapped uh, possibility that it will probably never be discovered because the game is basically dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It had an online too, as well. I think it was also one of the better Vita games as well. That's how I first discovered it. I love your PlayStation Vita. Nice. Um, oh, well, moving on. So, Bright Memory Infinite. This is a game I bought on Steam a while ago. It's a very short game. I only played it for three hours. It's like an action FPS. You know, kind of like Doom, kind of like Trapang. You know, um, what's that other one that was memed to Oblivion that kind of ruined it for me? What was it called? Um, I forget. It's one with that robot and he fights God. I, 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 just, I don't know. I don't know. I forget the name, but that's fine. It's for the better. It's basically that. Action FPS. Mm-hmm. I, I think I really, I think I liked, I, I really liked it. It's pretty interesting. It was like very super soon I want to talk. It was very nice looking. The visuals were insane. My only issues is that the boss, the boss fight sucked. I'll be honest, the boss fights kind of sucked. They turned into like, an ar- it turned into it, it turned into an arena shooter where you would, um, where you would just uh, strafe and just shoot. Where in like the normal like core like combat, you would just uh, you would go around. You basically just would like, you could do like any. You would have like any approach that you'd mm-hmm. want. You know, and there's a lot of button binding because that was another confusing part—the button binds and stuff. Um, this Dragon's Dogma. Dragon's Dogma is a very unique experience. It's a shame. No, the wind is too. pushing me. That's the all. The wind we is need. pushing me. I, it's a shame. Dragon's Dogma Two. Um, I think it's just inferior mm-hmm. to Dragon's Dogma. Uh, one, because it doesn't have Bitter Black Isles, mm-hmm. and. Just some of the balancing is completely screwed up. A lot of classes are got basically neutered. Um, the NPCs look weird. Um, I feel like the love interest uh, were as it didn't feel as invested. I wasn't as invested. Um, and it's it's very, and it was more actiony than like real it, 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 as opposed to trying to go for like realism like Dragon's Dogma Two. It was just more fun, and I think I like the music and and uh Dragon's Dogma One better because you know um there is a uh, a song. I think the song was called Mortal Kombat, and like it's why'd you delete that? What was that? It was just Bright Memory Infinite again. Oh, I put it twice. Oh yeah. my bad. Oops. Um, it was uh, a. <laughs> it, it starts up with like a regular like, j- uh, you know, orchestral like action like RPG music, mm-hmm. and then you just hear a guitar rip, and it's just like dang. And it's when you're like uh, you know, when you turn the tides of the battle, where you start you know, you know, winning. Mm-hmm. I think that's really cool. It's very cinematic, you know, where um. You listen. You have like the regular like music, and then like you have a remix motif version of it where it's more action oriented where it's like okay you're in act you're in a you're in a combat scenario right now mm-hmm. and then it goes to uh okay now you're winning the combat scenario right now you're about to you're about to top one monster you're about to succeed about to win and then you win and then you get the like the victory music after and it's just very fun it's a very dragon song is a very unique experience you know i can understand why people find a hard, find a trouble to to get into it it takes so long for it to get good but when it gets good it gets good you gotta walk everywhere, man. What the fuck? Yeah, but the maps are very small. There's a very, I guess maybe I'm used to like walking and doing nothing for so long because I like, I played a lot of Genshin. But you know, I still really liked it. Yo. Oh. Shinobito and just, Tenchu, yo, the same thing. Tenchu. I'm just kidding. Basically the same thing. Action ninja games. I really like them. Yeah, Tenchu is more of yeah. the what do you call it? It's more of the meme. Yeah. It's more of the meme one, yeah. The first Tenchu. The first Tenchu, holy crap, man. That was brutal. <laughs> it's so brutal. But I like the music. And Shinobudo, I like the music. I, I played Shinobudo. I, I only remember having more memories of Shinobudo 2 than Shinobudo 1. Shinobudo 2, I liked. It was pretty good. It was just like you go into a sandbox and you like a bunch of stealth kills and stuff. You're basically playing as a ninja. That's pretty much it. The same thing with Tenshu. I, I like those games. It's a shame we don't get those anymore. Mm. I don't think we've gotten a ninja game like that in a very, very long time. Mm. Um, Wild Hearts. We have Wild Hearts. Wild Hearts is basically Monster Hunter, but 
it's uh it's got more action i feel like wild hearts was what i wanted in uh rise i'm gonna be honest i feel mm. like wild hearts was basically what i wanted in rise but it um Damn, I repeated myself, but it just like because it was just held back by EA and probably like a and, and a few other things like probably get mentioned, but it's just like it's a shame because I did like that game. I really did like that game. You know the action, the weapon types, like they were fun. I didn't play it for too long because I only had it on Game Pass, so I couldn't like autistically play every single weapon and just get good at all of them. You know, like I do with Monster Hunter, but I did like, I did like, uh, Wild Hearts for its unique take. You know, I had a very special weapon called the Karakui, mm -hmm. uh, which, sorry, yeah, yeah, Karakui, and basically it, um, was a transforming weapon. It basically was four weapons in one, you know, or five, technically. It was technically five weapons in one, so... It had a very, uh, it had like an insane possibility of play style for it, you know, and it had its own meter and you could do like special attacks. So, I mean, that was pretty much a lot of other weapons too. There was the umbrella that lets you fly and then there was like a claw dagger weapon. I forget the name of it, but basically that was, that was, a, that was Attack on Titan. Basically the whole weapon was attack, was playing Attack on Titan. It was such an insane weapon. I think another thing too is because the game feels a little bit unfinished, there's like a couple like stuff you can do that I don't think you normally would do. Like if a monster were to fly away with like the it were to fly away, I could use that claw weapon and I would lash onto it and it would take me a million feet into the air. Accidental and because, peak. Yeah, and oh. because and because there's no you don't die to fall damage, but if you fall far enough you basically like die but you get respawned to someplace. So it doesn't cost a life or anything. It's more just like really really dumb you just pass you just get you just get knocked unconscious but that's what ha that would happen so many times where i'm like so high up it's like you see the you can see the draw distance almost that's how ridiculous it is yo and, okay and just a traversal as well too yo and uh and the other what was it the card creation system where you can build stuff i think people didn't like it because they thought it was, oh it's just fortnite monster hunter but oh. <laughs> in all honesty in all honesty it was actually really fun the only thing that held it back was the terrain because it would screw up if the terrain was not flat so um there's certain areas where it made fights significantly harder just because you couldn't use it yo that's awesome and there was a simple there's a special skill ceiling where you could use to get iframes and stuff and i i i, I don't remember how specifically to set it up but i remember seeing videos of it and i thought it was like really really good um unravel unravel 2 I only played Unravel 2. Yeah, I started I think thinking about Tokyo Ghoul, I'm sorry. Damn, no, I don't blame you. Unravel 2, is that the game with the stickman? No, it's the one with the little string puppet thingies. Magic yeah, that's like the most unique game on the list. It's so different from everything else. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it is. It's a platformer. I don't really play much platformers. I can't think of a lot. I can't really think of platformers that I think that were niche that I liked. You know, Spyro's not niche. Crash is not niche. Mario's definitely not niche. Sonic's not niche, you know. Uh, uh, platformers are pretty major, unless it's like made by an indie studio. But I don't play a lot of indie games. Um, Unravel Two it was surprisingly published by EA, but it was made by uh, I forget the name of the developers. But that was one of the best like 2D platformers I played. I think that's my favorite. That's my number one favorite game from E from EA that's published, mm -hmm. honestly. And it's like not even any of their mainline stuff. It's more so just uh, it's it's a it's a platformer that no one's ever heard of, mm -hmm. you know. I actually do not regret that purchase. It was fun. I hundred percent to do. It's a very fun experience. Oh uh, yeah, yo! Now you gotta you know, explain. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say like it's uh, it had really good music, very good visuals. You know, it had a story. It was telling a story in the background. I don't remember it unfortunately. The story yo, you got more Kawaii just, Red I, and Kawaii Blue. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's because I was playing it with uh, Haroon, so he ended up laughing and goofing off a lot. So I wasn't focused on the story, but I had a fun time playing it with them. Like I was, I was laughing. We, I have some videos of. Uh, online somewhere where it was just me and her just laughing over dumb stuff where we're just you know it's 3 a.m in the morning playing this we're just having a good time Damn. Just like, 
Damn that. It was fun. It's a very it's a it's a it's a co op game where like you have to like because your lives are both tied to each other. You kind of have to work together. If you mm-hmm. have bad synergy, you're not gonna get far in that game. It's gonna be a painful experience. But mm-hmm. having like a decent amount of synergy, it's fun. So I recommend it. Mm-hmm. It makes me wish I could transfer a lot of my PlayStation games to PC. You know, but oh well. I guess I'll just wait. Okay. I guess we have God Eater. Yeah, that's just, God yeah, Eater that's just again Monster Hunter. What the fuck? That's again it's Monster it's Monster Hunter, but you know anime. Yo, and the storyline too. What the fuck? This one has storyline story stupid. Line. The story's stupid. Let's get God this has story's arrived. Dumb. We yeah. gotta kill God. Yeah. Like, um, but I like the, I like some of the enemies. I like the music. I like the mechanics. I like the weapons. You know enough said really the only problem is is it just lacks some depth it just lacks a little depth and you know it's anime so i couldn't take it too seriously uh, unfortunately then he got i think i i think i stuck with one weapon type the entire game and just played it through i think no mm-hmm. i stuck with two and then i stuck with one weapon type after and just played that through because that was the more unique weapon type because it was a transforming weapon where it was like a dual blade uh, it was dual blades, and then it was also like a spear, like a pole arm, like double blade, of, like spear. My only complaint is that the combat lacks depth. It's the same issue with the Tokiden series. The combat just lacks uh, depth. It needs a little more. Yo, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Onimusha? I only played Onimusha Warlords. I don't know how niche Onimusha is. It's I think it is niche. Dead. I don't so, it's pretty dead right now. It's basically it's Resident bad. Evil, but if you're a samurai, like old school Resident Evil with the fixed cameras and stuff, I thought it was really fun. It's a very short game, so like you can just go through it once you play, and that's it. But I liked it. It's very fun. Mm, yeah, I like Lonely uh, Mushu too, but yeah, but it, it had a meme. Okay, it had Mega Man. Yeah, it had Mega Man in it. So what the heck? Yeah, I did not know that. Oh wait, that was the Onimusha fighting game. My bad. Onimusha Blade oh. Warriors. Yeah. I did not know Onimusha. Had that's a not even. Game that's not even like a classic Onimusha. It's so different. But oh, I yeah. do like the premise of Onimusha with the yeah. fighting spirits. It's fun. Then we have Ultra Age, I guess. Ultra Age was niche. I liked it. Uh, it was made by. Uh, it was another Steam game, so made by just like mm-hmm. some random guy in his base. Probably a kid. I kid, nah. But like, it was Yo, fun. what a god, I man! It. What a god! I just, I just thought that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there was a really annoying robot character, I think. Yeah, really annoying robot character, and this story made no sense. Like, when I got to the end, like, I didn't even know, like, what the heck happened. It barely, it, it barely touches the story, it only vaguely touches the story, you know, but it's just an action game. It's fun. The ending drags, though, it just turns into, like, a hallway simulator around the end. There's, like, maybe one boss fight I struggled on a little bit. But that was about it. Just a fun action game. Mm, yo, then you got... Well, that's the list. That's the that's my list. I spent so much time talking about Gravity Rose and uh, Dragon's Dogma and Wild Hearts. I guess I have a more closer attachment with those ones. I than see. Any Good list. Yeah. Yo, Onimusha is actually crazy. The atmosphere in that game, oh my god. The, envir- oh, yeah. the environments, yo. Yeah. yeah, I liked Onimusha, Warlords. I only played Warlords, but I did like it. Yo, okay, no, that was all great. That was all peak. Yo, so one of the things that I've been thinking about, right, that yeah. ruin a video game. Oh, are we talking about what ruins video games? Yeah, it's like the one the developer okay. doesn't even want to try. There's no inspiration. Yeah. Like, if they try and mess it up, you know what, that's okay. I'll give them a pass. Cause they if tried. they try and mess it up, you yeah. want them to purposely make a game bad? Why would no, you, no, no, no. Like, if they, they tried, but messed it up just because of circumstances, right? Not intentionally. Right. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I guess. I mean, it's not fine, but it's like, I can understand. Hmm. Yeah, so what I have a problem with is if a developer <laughs> makes a game and they yeah. just want to make a buck and throw mm-hmm. that shit in, it's like, yeah, fuck this. If there's no passion behind yeah. making it, yeah, I agree. Like, 
there's a reason you're in that industry in the first place, right? Like, yeah. you, you want to make games. Why would you? Unless that you're telling me you just... Mm. If you mm -hmm. want to, if you want to stop making games, just stop making games. Yeah, like if there is a uh, no soul in it, you know what I mean. Yeah, soul. Yeah. Like a certain remake that came out. Yeah, a lot of soulless remakes. That's uh. Yeah, yeah remakes that's definitely not, kill. It's not peak. It's not cool. Yeah, I don't want remakes anymore. I don't want to relive the past twenty years. I want to. I want something new. Even if it's not completely original, I'd like something different. That is fair. No. It's like, man, like I, 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 I crap on FF16. This might not having really been playing it, other than like the demo, and the demo consists of just mostly cutscenes and barely playing it, which annoyed me. But like, you know, at least like the premise seems unique. Wish I could have actually played it. Mhm. Mm Okay. I'll have like two or one more question and then we can end this. Yeah. Yeah, so what yeah. do you consider to be a political video game? A video game, sorry. Uh, because technically we can have a game, right? Like an RPG that has an anti-war message, right? Mm -hmm. Like what do you consider that political? An anti-war message? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And what do you consider that to be a bad thing depending on how it's executed? It dep yeah, it depends on how it's executed, yeah. I mean, I don't think, like, obviously war is bad, but I mean, there's a, I guess there's a way of, there's a right way of telling, explaining, mm -hmm. like, uh, an alternative, or like, why war, why, how you shouldn't, you mm -hmm. know, um, geez, how do I word this properly? Yeah, you have to think about Nanao's house. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I mean, there's nothing, but, oh, well, there is a problem with pushing a political message. There's nothing fine. There's nothing wrong with talking about politics. There is a problem with talking, with, with pushing a political mm -hmm. message. Fair enough. That's my issue. All right. Okay. That's, yeah, yeah I get that. Yo, and then my last question. One Hino. One Kakera. <laughs> Hino when oh, Hino Chuck went Lucky. Kakera, we we did not talk about Hino or Kakera in this. Oh, yo, you're talking about the uh, fighting game. Yeah, yo, the sheer fact that it was made by one person alone makes it. Yeah, peak. I mean, yeah, it's insane. That was that was a couple years ago. I mean, over a decade ago. Yeah, it's like know. it's like what do you call it? It's like Fate's Day Night, right? The fighting game. Yeah. But like mm, a fate fan made version. Code. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, unlimited code. Yeah. AKA, uh, fuck. For short. Yeah. They're just funny. That's funny. That's the acronym for it. Um. Yo, that was it. That was a great discussion. Whoa, what the fuck? Yeah. I think I have. What else did I have here? Um. Did we talk about what makes games bad? Uh, I think we did just a little bit, yeah. Damn, that was that was a short save. We just talked. I mean, I guess this was all we're talking about. Really, I think we. Uh, I had a couple of notes. I think we should. Uh, one thing I wrote down was like understand that game development is expensive and time consuming, so it's very hard to do all that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think DEI plays a role as well. Yeah, that's true. Like, I think they. I think everyone or the higher ups like choose uh dei over an actual competence yeah. within the industry and that's kind of the what caused this whole mess that we're in in the first place mm -hmm. they're so focused on dei that you know we don't have any actual competent people that can you know keep the system up and so because of that now we're getting a crap ton of layoffs you know and technology advancing with like ai you know that might be start replacing actual jobs I, I feel like we're i mean we're already living in a dystopia but like i feel like it's only going downhill and only gets worse yeah you know, that's uh that's a real shame who's also trying to get into the industry you know i uh, try to do art specifically you know i feel like i'm in a really bad spot like i'm like it's pretty much like game over but i want to try because i really want to make a game mm -hmm. because I, I like games and i think i could I think I know what it takes to make a good game. I, at least, not to, not to sound egotistical, like, obviously, I 
my vision of a game is not the same as anyone else's vision of a game you know mm -hmm. it, it's not it's no it's nowhere near from perfect you know my vision of a game but it's a game that would primarily focus on its aspects and do that well you know like any other genre you know and you know since i'm like focused on the writing and like the actual gameplay aspects of it i think i have a general idea and it, it's only gonna get it's only gonna refine and improve uh as time nice. goes on because i'm like learning things you know every other day you know even when i'm not inherent directly working on it mm -hmm. you know i just think about it from time to time and then i think oh you know this idea from before you know actually wasn't as as bad um, or the idea I thought of, you know, was, was, was bad. So I can, sh I have to change it, you know, just make adjustments. It's just, it's just trimming out the fat. Really. Mm -hmm. Um, what else did I have here on this list? Oh yeah. The cinematic, uh, slop over the gameplay. Uh, developers really just want to tell more of a story than an actual gameplay. I feel mm -hmm. like they just don't want to. I don't know. It's like it's weird. It's like they want to make games, but it's like you don't want to like make games. You more like you want to make movies. It's kind of the thing. Oh, my, shit, my the Kojima. Kojima. Yeah, because it's like Kojima. Like you joined a gaming, you joined you joined a gaming company. You you, you wanted to make games, right? But like no, I want to. He wants to do movie stuff. I'm like, okay, well, dude, if you want to do movies, make movies. Just go into the movie industry. Like, what are you doing? Oh yeah. Like it's not that hard if you want to do something like go into that like it's as simple as that you know and regarding my, and regarding my position on like art and stuff i mean i feel like my only option in order to guarantee that i can get in is if i have like a multiple skill set so it's where like i stretch myself all over mm -hmm. the place that be uh 3d you know uh, concept art environmental environmental art you know environment design just all that stuff i just feel like i need to just have, if i have multiple like skills you know, then maybe, like, that's, like, one reason they'll keep me is because, oh, we have a person who's, you know, fairly competent in multiple different fields, you know. Mm -hmm. So let's let's hire let's hire him for, like, one of those set of fields. And, I see. Know, what else did you have uh, on just your to, list? Just to, just to have a chance, just to, just to have a chance of, I guarantee mm -hmm. that, you know, I, I would get hired, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to, oh, he only does this one thing, oh, and we don't actually technically need it, and we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll, mm -hmm. we're not going to hire this guy. Versus, oh, this guy knows how to do uh, almost everything. Yeah, we can hire him. We can find a position on him, and then we could, you know, uh, we can, you know, refine his skills, you know, from there. Mm -hmm. You know, etc. That's at least that's where I feel right now. Mm -hmm. We're not necessarily we'll we'll never find we're not necessarily refine, but more so of just you know, as I'm if I'm in that specific uh field, like I would just I would. Uh, I would expand on it myself as well, because like it's not you don't you don't go to work for a company to, you know, learn to set a skill. You should already have that set of skill, per se, right? And then it's just it gets better the more time you spend in there. Mm -hmm. Was that it? I think that's yeah. That was pretty much it. You know what? I agree with all your points. Although I I'm I'm kind of a weirdo because I do enjoy like Kojima uh, Kojima movies I mean games. <laughs> I mean I enjoy the games too. I think they're wacko. Mm -hmm. The thing is that Kojima cutscenes are, are, are yo ten hours are each. Fun. Yeah, holy shit. Yeah, but like they're too long. I mean like it's a video. At the end of the day, it's a video game. Gameplay is God king. Damn, always. bro. It does not matter. It does yeah. not matter. Gameplay will always be king. That is a hard agree. Yeah. Oh yeah, speaking of stories and games, I should like elaborate on this. I think you and me did uh, mention this, like we talked about this before. Yeah. Like why I'm drawn towards games, right? Why? Why? I like your response, just why? Just hurry the why fuck up, motherfucker, tell me why. Yeah, why? No, no, no. Well, not, not necessarily, but you know. You yeah, know let I... me see. Okay, thing is, I enjoy storytelling. I enjoy stories, right? And I think games are a unique medium to tell stories because they add that interactive element, right? Yes. And that's what I love yes. to see, right? I want to see that being refined in, di in different ways. Like the, and the genre that does this the most, I feel are RPGs, right? 
story, game. Although it, it, they're not the only genre that does it. They're just the ones that I, you know, have more experience with. RPGs. Right. With that whole RPG gameplay mix, right? Although I do enjoy games that don't have a lot of story, like Monster Hunter. Yeah. But usually that is what I'm drawn towards. Like that is why I used to love Final Fantasy. Not not as much these days. No, not as much. The story is completely gone downhill ever since. Which is a shame. I'm I'm not a fan of the remake. At least here's the thing. The the first part had some merit. Mm-hmm. The first part had some merit. The second one does not. Yeah, it I can was... uh, I can feel that, yeah. And oh uh, yeah, what's your reason? My reason for being drawn the games. Or being drawn the games. Yeah. yeah, it's the same reason as well, but it's also just because I I grew up playing them. Uh so I really, uh, I really, uh, oh geez, my bad. Like I, I, I grew up playing video games, and I've always liked it. I've always found it fascinating. I, you know, obviously, like I, when I, uh, I was a weeb at one point. I really liked. I really was obsessed with anime in Japan and all that. And then I got into video games, and I really, really liked video games because mm-hmm. they were fun. And you know, they also, they also have really good storytelling as well. Mm-hmm. And you know, I watched a lot of YouTubers, and then uh, uh, what happened is, you know, I grew up, got a little more life experience, and then I realized, hey, I want to make video games. And it's also just because I feel like games right now aren't are doing so great. They're not. They're not the same as they were, like you know, ten, ten, like fifteen years ago. Like it's a shell of its former self. Like this industry mm-hmm. is only going downhill. You know, creatively, it's creatively bankrupt. You know, it's I it's agree almost with that. as if yeah. the people it's almost as if the people higher up on the ladder don't really want to be higher up on the ladder outside of just a paycheck. You know, the the thing is, is like a, a video game uh is the video game market is still technically a tech industry at the end of the day, but it's one of the lower end tech industries. You know, mm-hmm. insane amount of work you put in for like less pay compared to like other uh. Uh, technical fields but the reason I think people still do it regardless is because it's a passion you know I think my reason for wanting to be- become a concept artist so I can make a video game one day is because it comes from a passion you know I'm passionate about the the, the uh, good writing you know good art you know the the technical aspect of video games I mean it's why I you know hack away a blender for like you know 10 plus hours a day with no problem you know mm-hmm like I, 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 it's gen- it's generally a passion. Like I enjoy it. I have fun. Even though I really should step back from Blender and I should focus on like learning my Japanese, because I wanna, I wanna travel to Japan because I wanna make a game there. Because I, I, I don't, I just think I have better opportunity than I would in America. And it also gives me an excuse to say I'm giving back to Japan for you know kind of shaping the way I am today a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know my opinion on like you know anime and. You know, just like the video games that I I'm into. You know, a lot of it does like is infl- it does come from Japan. You I know? see. So it's more like maybe it's my way of giving backs in some ways, and it's also just you know that maybe I could see really behind the scenes. You know how how the gaming market you know over there kind of go back on track, also being behind the scenes. You know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I part. Sometimes I don't really want to take credit. For my work, it's more so I just I want you guys to like go back to making good stuff again, you know. Mm-hmm. But that yeah, that's a pretty that's a pretty messed up and narcissistic way of thinking. I shouldn't I should take credit for like work I'm putting into. I see. You know. So I'll uh. So uh, yeah, I gotta work on that. But yeah, that's basically my reason for like video games. It's just. It's just it's it's a more it's a more interactive media than than movies or TV because mm-hmm. you're you're because your actions because you, you you have you have input you know when you watch a a movie or TV show you're just one you're you're just a spectator you know with uh, mm-hmm. games you know you're more or less a spectator we're more a part of the world mm-hmm. and that's where the immersion factor uh, ties into you know. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So that's that's my stance. I know it was a bit long, you know, and I kind of droned on as always, but you know, I just I enjoy talking about this stuff. All right, I yeah, really thank do. you, man. Yeah, that was uh, that was pr- thank you, Mr. Libra. I mean, that was pretty good. Yeah, appreciate it.